Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. I think I've pretty much covered this. So, you know, as I said, there's a lot of areas we could win. There's a lot of... um, back and forth on, uh, on on parsing the economic theories in here, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Um, but we think the unemployment problem really is the key. And, we, and in, before, we're, before we see any type of, um, before we buy in hook, line, and sinker to this recovery in the U.S., we'd really like to see this improve. This shows the unemployed persons in the U.S., number of unemployed, and you can see the massive uh, you can see how the jobs got wiped out. This is a number of unemployed. And this is the official numbers. The unofficial numbers are much larger than, than this. And if, you, and if you factor in what's considered the underemployed uh, of U.S. workers, un, way underemployed relative to their skill level, um, I think you can add a lot more to this chart. We start to see a little bit of improvement in here, but again, not that much given that a lot of the economists, a lot of the analysts, um, have told us that we're completely free and we're growing again. We're, we're still very concerned, to tell you the truth. But this has been a, the wipeout in jobs here because of this credit crunch has been, has been to the degree and the speed that we've never seen before. And that's another reason that we say this isn't your grandfather's business cycle. This something has, has changed here in a very big way because of the debt overhang in the global economy. Um, and until we see this improve a little bit better, we're not going to buy in yet. So, the, so I think the U.S. double dip scenario really still has to be in play, especially if you consider what's going on with with, with the likes of Goldman. Now, this, something like this really could spiral uh, into and hit the stock market in a big way, as I said, and hit the wealth factor and everything else. The SEC spreads its wings here and goes after other firms, which I think there's a pretty high probability they will. Um, then. This tends to push further down on credit, which means the small business isn't going to get those loans, which he's not getting anyway, um, but the chances fall even further. And I made this little notation here. The last small business survey for March actually showed things deteriorating from a small business standpoint. And that's really critical for the U.S. economy. It's the small business that creates jobs. Um, so. The fact that we're seeing um, small businesses actually become a little more pessimistic in the latest readings uh, on their surveys uh, is not a comforting feeling going forward. We also saw jobless claims in the last the last uh, major report. They were worse than expected. So this isn't improving um, uh, to the degree in which everybody seems uh, fat, dumb, and happy about this recovery. So it's something we're watching closely. We call this chart the Euro spiral of death because there really are three factors that that are that are pushing down on the euro at the moment, which we ultimately we think the euro grinds down to par against the U.S. dollar or a lot more. Start up here, and we see these we see this happening. Um, the default risk premium rising. The euro was very much an artificial construct in that. The economies that were tied to the euro, part of the European Monetary Union, were able to borrow at the same rate Germany was, or slightly above Germany. Now, there's no way um, in God's green earth that Italy, Portugal, and Spain um, should have ever been able to, or Greece, (laughs) needless to say, ever should have been able to borrow anything near German interest rates. But that was one of the major artificial constructs of the of the European Monetary Union. It wasn't until the credit crunch um, that we finally started to see these premiums start to change where the market started to, started to price in some risk in the European Monetary Union. We kept waiting for it and waiting for it, and it finally started to come about. Now it's starting to happen uh, in a very, very big way. Um, so the fault risk now is rising tremendously for Greece. Uh, the spreads now have reached uh, an all-time high between the Greek, the Greek 10-year bonds and the German Bund 10-year, um, 10-year bonds. Um, that's an indication of rising risk premium. It's another reason the euro got hit a little bit again today. Um, big meeting tomorrow. Um, the muckety mucks of the European Union are meeting with, with, <coughs> with Greece uh, about extending this loan facility. But 
what we haven't seen is this risk premium soar for those other countries that we think are in as bad or worse shape than Greece. So we don't think all this default risk is yet priced into the euro. We think at some point it will and push it down even further. Monetary union incentives. Germany is the core of the European Monetary Union. Germany was the, the DMARC was the anchor currency that created the exchange rate mechanism, as it was called initially. One of the reasons the European Monetary Union was created, so it would be a captive audience basically for German industrialists. That really was one of the bottom line, and it's why Germany gave up its DMARC. You know, they're not going to give that away for nothing. Uh, they gave up the DMARC for the euro precisely because of that. Over 50% now of German exports go to the European, uh, the Eurozone economies, uh, much more than they did before the European uh, Monetary Union. Obviously, it's a lot easier, the cross-border mechanisms and everything else. So German incentives um, to subsidize the union, which they've done all along, the weaker countries, um, basically allowing them to tie to their credit uh, and borrow, um, has been there in a big way for Germany. But right now, for Germany are fading tremendously. And they're fading because of the fact that we're seeing demand come out of the Eurozone economy uh, because of all these problems. We're also seeing the demand for German credit uh, and backing and backstopping of all these fiscal basket cases rise. Now, it's political suicide for Angela Merkel, the head of Germany, to use German credit to backstop what's going on um, in Greece and these other countries because she sees the slippery slope. This is one of the reasons why the European, excuse me, the International Monetary Fund was called in. Germany said we're not backstopping these guys. It was something that <coughs> Trichet, um, who's the head of the European Central Bank, expected Germany, France, and the others to step up and handle this problem alone by providing direct loan guarantees among the indiv individual states. But Germany balked um, because the incentives for them in the union are fading. Um, their citizens are sick of it. They're sick of paying for the rest of the European Union. But, the be but they've gotten benefits from it, Germany, as I said. But as demand declines um, in the years ahead because austerity is the only way, the only seeming way to get out of this problem from these other countries, you're going to see the demand for German exports inside the Eurozone on a relative basis decline. So why does Germany stay here? There's less and less a reason to that happen. It's not out of the realm that we may wake up one day and they've already opened the door to this and even discussed it. In fact, there's a lawsuit about to start um, which says that, the, <clears throat> that uh, by some citizens in Germany, um, some law professors that have been against this for a while, that are suggesting that um, Germany should not transfer any more money to Greece um, or the European or the Eurozone as part of the European Monetary Union because it's impacting Germany negatively, which was part of their constitution when they signed, when they created the European Monetary Union. So that little signature in the back, in the back door is now starting to come through the front door and create a problem here. So we could wake up one day and Germany is gone um, and continues to say they're gone, it means the Euro, Euro as it is would dissolve. The probability of that happening near term is still slim, um, but it's increasing again, that probability. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.